Hello. Good morning, or I guess technically afternoon at this point. Welcome. Uh, welcome. It is a Saturday, and that means I'm streaming again. So today, this is not a Revyung 41, but I had a special request last night to do some uh, uh, dye sublimation printing, and I was going to try to do it last night, but I couldn't figure out YouTube. I, I'm really new to this, so whatever. Uh, but I figured I could do a couple real quick and then get into the Revyung. Uh, but today, Revyung. So I've got this lovely PCB right here. Uh, I don't remember where I got it. Maybe Board Source? I don't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, the Revyung 41. It is a uh, unibody split ergo keyboard. So. Very similar kind of stagger on the columns to a uh, corn, uh, but all one piece. This is attractive to me because this would be a really nice form factor for travel, for stuffing in my backpack long term. And there's also only one controller, so only one battery, and only, you know, whatever. Uh, but it's also just really cool looking, I think. So I'm going to build one and then use it for a while and see. Uh, I do have... Uh, this is an MX version, so it takes MX switches, or MX style switches, but uh, I uh, was talking with someone on Discord, and they are, uh, they were working on converting theirs to, or converting this to use chalk switches, and I was like, oh hey, I'm really interested in that too, could you also do some nice nano niceties? So there's going to be a power switch, there's going to be battery pads, that sort of thing, and as far as I know, that is like in the mail as of a few hours ago. So I'm really excited about that because that would be kind of a requirement. Like I don't want to have MX switches in my backpack, but we'll see. Um, but anyways, this will be fun. I think they look really cool. There's also like on the switch plate, there's a little grill in the middle here and there's an LED that goes behind there. So it kind of glows. I think that's a really cool aesthetic. So yeah, I think this will be a really fun build. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. And it must be board source because these little packages are very board source. And also these diodes are very board source. So um, maybe I should have spammed on the board source server, but I don't know if I can do that. But anyways, so today, uh, or to get started, I will talk about the uh, die sub printing. So um, everyone, I'm sure, is well aware that, you know, if you want to get legends on a keyboard one way to do it is to print them uh with die sublimation uh commercial die sublimation is obviously like a whole thing and these are uh die sub pbt keycaps uh but i'm like well what if i want to print something else on them uh and so uh, i was looking into it more linus tech tips has like a video of he used some sort of like wedge-shaped clamp thing and stuff like that um but i was like there's got to be a way to do it better using a, a weight vertically so that you're not like hitting at an angle or something like that playing around with it more and talking with some people on discord uh kind of settled on for my process at the moment using uh some silicon and uh, what is effectively a clo an expensive clothing iron this is just a hot plate that is very hot, and I put pressure on it. Uh, it's not super precise or anything like that, but this is just for screwing about. So I made these molds to uh, because uh, chalk keycaps the the legs stick out further than the thing, so you can't just like put it down and put a bunch of pressure on it, or you'll mess up the legs. So I wanted to have a base to put it on. So. This slots nicely right into this base here. And then, because they're not a flat top, but this is a flat surface, need something to press down on it to apply pressure, so use this. And basically all I did here was I took an Altoids tin at MK Ultra's suggestion, I think, uh, poured a layer of silicon in, threw some switches or some caps in there, let it cure overnight, put some uh, petroleum jelly on there to keep the silicon layers from sticking together, and then poured more silicon over the top of that, and now I've got a little footprint thing that 
gives me a nice flat surface to press on. So, that's awesome. Now, how do you print? You can't just use a regular printer, like a laser printer or something. So what I have is an Epson something or other. I'm not going to show it, but it's an Epson uh, EcoTank printer. And then the nice thing about the EcoTank printers is they are refillable. Like the, the, by design, they're refillable. So you get this, this dye instead of printer ink, and you put that in the printer, and then you can print on dye sub transfer paper. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of little dick butts on here. And then what you do is you put this on the thing you're going to print on, apply pressure and heat over a certain amount of time, boom, it transfers onto there. So I have a couple of examples of this already, uh, both with dick butts and with other things. Um, but I have a whole sheet of dick butts printed up because I figure, you know, if I'm going to print off, if I'm going to waste a whole piece of paper for printing, I might as well waste it on the best thing possible. So, um, the idea here is you cut out, you can see where I've cut out the other, some other dick butts, uh, cut that out, stick it on the cap. And I use a little bit of Kapton tape to make sure it stays in place. And then you put the mold on top of it, press down a couple in like uh, 90 seconds later or something like that. You've got a printed keycap. So we're going to try that on stream. Uh, live demo is the best thing as always. Nothing ever goes wrong with live demos. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> see what I can do here. Um, yeah. Okay, that is not a good cutting surface. And you can still see over here, so that's good. And uh, one thing I didn't think about when I first printed this sheet out is that since I am taking this and then flipping it over and putting it on the piece, it needs to be mirrored. Um, but since these aren't like production and they're dick butts, I don't really care that they're technically backwards. Um, <laughs> I'm not super concerned about the... Uh, the quality, or it's more of a proof of concept than an actual, like, I'm going to sell these and make a bunch of money. Uh, because if for no other reason I don't have a license to use this commercially or anything like that. So I really probably can't sell these legally. And I wouldn't want to, just out of respect for the artist, if nothing else. So that one is a little closer trimmed. I'm going to retrim this one just to get it tighter. Now, to do this in a larger scale, uh, one thing uh, someone on Discord, Nicole, has done. Uh, she's Nicole S. She's on the 40s, maybe not 40s, but she's on like Keycraft and Key Keyboard Collective and um, low profile keyboard, all that stuff. Um, she uses a big t-shirt heat press. Um, and she also has a huge silicon mold and has this nice, like wooden base to put the caps in. And then, um, yeah, no bot commands because I don't know what bots to use. So if you have suggestions, I would I would love that. Um, but she has this nice wooden base, and then she can print out like 30 at a time or something like that. But she's also got it set up so she'll print this and then has a laser cut thing to cut the paper so that it shifts because it's not a flat surface. It's going to press down, and that means the paper is going to move a little bit. But she already has that built into the the cuts she can like laser cut that and it's it's really cool um i don't know uh if she has done like a full-on run with them yet i know she's done it for herself but i don't know if she's like going to do it at a larger scale but uh she has been a huge help for this uh if inspiration and tips and tricks so okay this i need to turn
And then I'm going to take just a little bit of capped on tape. New camera position, so trying to figure out where I need to hold things so y'all can actually see it. You don't strictly need the tape, I don't think, but it keeps it from moving around, which makes it sharper to print. Because otherwise, when you press down, it moves a little bit, and when you lift up, it moves a little bit, and especially when you lift up and it's still hot, it might get a little ghosting or a little blurring on the print. So... All right, and this is actually the first time I've used this particular mold. Like, I've done this with other molds that I've made, but this one with the Altoids tin, the first time. So this is a completely I'm doing this live kind of thing. So uh, I usually print for about 90 seconds, and I just kind of hold down with my, my hand some force, and this is already on and hot. So here goes. Hey Siri, set timer for 90 seconds. What's up, Ryan? Oh, nice. You can actually see the countdown on my watch. Oh, no, it's gone. So this is obviously not something you'd want to do for a large operation, and that's why Nicole was doing the t-shirt press thing. Uh, I don't have one of those, and they're expensive, so if I was going to do that, I'd want to make absolutely certain that I was, like, really into this. <laughs> and I don't know if I am, but it is fun to be able to do, uh, so that's good. I have a friend who's a big fan of dick butts, and that's the inspiration for putting a dick butt on a cap. That and I think it's just kind of hilarious, the the idea of using beautiful keycaps and putting a dick butt, something as stupid as a dick butt on them. So it may look like I'm just resting my hands on here, but I'm actually holding down with quite a bit of weight, too. Okay, there's 90 seconds up. I'm going to lift off of here. Put this back in the little tin. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so if we do this carefully, and it didn't turn out. I should be able to lay the tape back down. Oh yeah, it totally didn't work at all. Um, like nothing transferred at all. I was gonna say we could lay the tape back down and do another print, but uh, I'm not gonna bother because I think this... Oh, well that one printed a little bit. Uh, so yeah, that was a... Oh, you can't see. So... Let's see camera right here you can see it printed just the tiniest a bit I think what it probably is is I printed this sheet up a couple of months ago and I just need to print another one this one didn't transfer hardly anything so uh, that was a fail experiment but uh, yeah that's kind of the general process anyways it's the idea uh, I'm not going to try to do another one today or right now because I want to get moving. Um, but also because I moved my printer and I'm using a different computer down here now. And I'm just not set up to be able to print off another sheet. So I will do another stream, probably even just a video at some point on the process. Uh, but today, 
we're just going to call that a oops and uh, move on. So I'm going to unplug this. Get it out of the way. And the beautiful thing is these like bad prints. Since it's not printed very much on there, I'm just going to print over it. Uh, so I keep those kind of set to the side. Or actually, a good place to put them would be in the Altoids tin. Because these are fresh, unused, uh, blank MBKs. Um, so I don't want to... I want to keep those separate from the ones that are either used or the ones that have already been printed on. Uh, just because, like, if I'm going to actually... Uh, make something for somebody. I'm going to use a fresh cap um, rather than one that I've typed on for months and is all like gross. <laughs> so, okay. Revyung time. <sighs> Alright, so with this one we've got diodes. We've got okay, not anything there. We've got some RGBs. But they're not matrix RGBs, and they are fortunately not the SK6812s. But they are the bigger ones. Um, I haven't soldered these in a while. I'm going to try my new flux. I say my new. I'm going to try the new method I've been using for with flux to uh, make those a little easier, hopefully. Um, so we'll see on that. And I'm going to use Holy Panda switches, but it's a hot swap board, so it's not a big deal. And I've got, uh, I don't remember exactly what this is, but I've got uh, some NP profile, uh, I think these are uh, crayon caps that I'm going to put on here. Just some cheap caps from KBD fans. All right, what else do we got? We got a whole bag of goodies here. Oh yeah, it is from Board Source because there's the Board Source logo printed on the back there. All right, let's take the plate and stick it over there. It's got a two U stabilizer. Which I've never used before, so that'll be interesting. This is plate parts or case components. Uh, reset switch. Yeah. What else do we have here? Uh, that is, I believe, a cover for the controller, looks like. Yep. And it's probably what these are for. So I'll stick those together. Okay. This is definitely case stuff. There's bump-ons. More case stuff. More bump-ons. Okay. Cool. Oh. <laughs> And the all ever important hot swap sockets are not in that bag, but I've got them over here. Let me just get the iron heated up. Oh no, there's a hot swap sockets. They're right here. So, as usual, I am going to get started by using the diodes. These are the legless glass diodes. So they're basically the same thing as a through-hole diode, they just don't have any legs. Uh, which means they roll around, and some people don't like them because of that. But with my method that I've been using, it should actually be pretty easy, and maybe even easier than the uh, the flat ones. So, just because um, I can get more of the contact with flux.
So for controller, I'm just going to use a standard, you know, Pro Micro from the internet. Um, but I am also going to try out these spring headers. They're Mac 8 spring headers. The idea is that they're you, they're solderless, like hot swap headers. Um, so I want to play around with them. I bought a whole bunch. These were really expensive for what they are. But also I got a small quantity of them. I mean, this looks like a lot, but it's really not. There's only about 25 controllers worth of headers in here, which for $150, not very much. Um, but hopefully I, I'm talking with Mac 8 to see if they can make them longer because then you get more yield out of each one and they might come down in price each kind of thing. But uh, I'm going to try them on this uh, and if all else fails, I'll just solder the whole thing on. Because I've got regular square headers too. Uh, yeah. So that's the build. Or at least that's the plan for the build. Uh, and I also moved my camera. It's not overhead, but my... It's at basically eye level where my head would be. So if I kind of lean down and bump the camera a little bit, that's just me accidentally knocking the camera. I have this weird flexible arm thing that I'm hanging it from the ceiling with. It's terrible, but it works. Uh, I'm going to try some other stuff, but it, it's yeah, I wanted to try out the angle. So that's why it's a little weird and not like squared up. I would rather have it kind of squared. But yeah, so we'll see. But I've got my iron heated up. I've got this. I've got solder going. And I'll start with diodes, so I need these. Kind of get organized here a little bit. Um, oh, okay. Get some more light. Hopefully it's not glaring off of the PCB. All right. Um, looks like this is the side all the diodes are on. So we'll get started with that. And get my paintbrush. And my flux. And I need something to here. Squeeze a little bit of flux out of this. Load up the paintbrush a little bit. All right. Where do my diodes go? There they are. So, I want to have these nearby and not like up here, but they're, they'll roll around. So I'm going to try to stick them in this and see. All right. Okay, so the idea with this technique is you put a little bit of flux on the pad you're trying to solder to and a little bit of flux on the component and then just drop some solder from your iron onto it. So, like, I'll take my iron here. Actually, hang on. Got crap. Piled on the cable. So take the iron here 
and then just load it up with some solder. So it's got just a little dab, whoops, little dab of solder on there. How can I, okay. And then hit this with a little bit of flux, hit the pad with a little bit of flux. Put the components on there and soldered. Yep, that's on there. So now if we look at that joint, it's going to be hard to see because of light. Can I get the light up there a little better? There's a little bit too much solder on there, but it is solid. And let me look at it. under ye old microscope. Yep, looks good. Okay. So that that is that is really nice. I'm excited about this. Okay. Tiny little bit of solder on the pad, or flux on the pads, a little bit on the end of the component. Let me get this so I can, yeah, there we go. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of pads at once here. Because if I move quickly enough, which I should be able to, then I won't have a chance to dry. Stop it. Okay.
do three more pads here. And I'm hitting both of the actual pads on the thing, but you don't need to. And I'm going to try something a little bit different with these because that's reaching down into there is too much. Um, let me just put them in the lid. See if that's better. And now I'm going to switch tweezers. So these have a fatter tip. So hopefully that'll be easier to grip onto them without the diode wanting to like spin around while I'm brushing it. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Now if I can just keep the damn paintbrush from rolling around, I'll be in business. I really like these glass LEDs, or diodes rather, because you don't have to try to flip them over, which is like the most annoying thing about surface mount diodes, is when they're upside down and you're like, I, I want to flip this over so I can put it on the board. So one of the things I'm hoping to do with a new camera and or camera mount is get it so you can actually see much more closely what I'm doing without it being in my way or something. But this is about as low as I can get the camera to come down with this stupid arm thing that I have. 
which is actually meant to be a desk mount. So it's like a clamp that goes on to a desk, but I have it clamped to one of my floor joists in the ceiling above me. And so it's sideways and it's just not good. It was a good experiment, but it's time to move on. So I'm looking at a Manfrotto magic arm, which is like super adjustable, but they don't seem to be very long. So I have to figure out how to extend it somehow. And then I'm falling into the rabbit hole of, I need to go to a camera shop somewhere uh, and just talk to somebody about what I'm looking for and what is available and even what the words are for any of these things. So, because there's this thing called a super clamp I found out and like uh, just so much, there's so much stuff for camera rigging. It's a whole world. Okay, so I'm going to switch and do the other sides of these real quick. And I'm just going to dab a little bit of flux on each one. Okay, let me take a look at these. Alright, they look pretty good. Can I get that through the camera? Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe. Focus and fuck. No, wrong thing. Wrong thing to focus on. Whatever. All right. So far, so good.
All right, that one's a mess. <laughs> Let's try it again. There, that's better. It was just crooked and tried to fix it and then it was getting a cold joint and just, it was bad.
Oh, come on. There. Nope. You don't have to flip them over, but you still have to spin the damn things around, and that can be a pain. <laughs> I'm just going to turn this whole shebang around. There we go. Now the ones I have left are mostly facing the correct direction. Something fell, and I was like, well, that was the first diode that I lost. But no, it was just the tip from my tweezers.
One thing I want to do with this camera is figure out how to fix the focus so it doesn't constantly bounce back and forth and focus. Although then I also want a hotkey to switch it back to autofocus temporarily so I can be like, hey, look at this thing in front of me. I have no idea if any of that is even possible, but it's something I want to try to find. But I suspect I'm going to need a fancier camera to do that. And so this will end up being like a face camera or like a close-up camera. Like I want to try to mount it to my uh, exhaust fan. Because I think like it'd be a good place to have it and it could get a really close-up shot of what's going on on the board. But I have to figure out how to mount it. Because I had... So I've got these like... <clears throat> these things, which are meant to be, you hook them into your, uh, your vents for your car, and it's a magnet, so it sticks, you can, like, stick whatever to them, uh, there's, like, a, it's not a mag safe, because this is predating that, but it might actually work with this, so it kind of works with the phone, um, but, like, it came with plates that you can put inside your case or something like that to, to mount your phone with, but I use them for uh, my ham radio stuff because I can clip this into a vent and hang my microphone, hang my speaker, hang my display, uh, and not have to do any modifications to the car, which is good because most of the time I'm doing ham radio stuff, it's in a rental car that isn't even my rental car. So I can't make any permanent modifications, drill holes, or anything like that. Not that I'd want to. Um, but like some sort of like... But this is the other way around. It's meant to be more like... You clip it onto this and then use the magnet side, whereas I want to use the magnet side and clip the camera onto that side. And I tried with some of the built-in or the stuff that came with the camera, and it couldn't quite get it working, but uh, it's something I want to mess around with because I think it could be really cool to have a very close-up, like, directly above or from the side, maybe, shot of the camera or of the, the board. Um... So, I'm going to play around with camera angles and whatnot, basically, is what I'm starting, trying to say. Hello, Maker Jake. I also think it would make for better shots for, like, if I'm trying to explain a soldering technique or something I'm doing. You know, from up here, it's really hard to see what I'm doing with these tiny little components on this board. But, you know, if I could get it so it's, like, right up next to the camera, that'd be really cool. And I think it's doable. I just need to figure out the right way to mount the camera and some other stuff. Come on. All right, one more diode. And then I got to do the other side of the diodes and then I'll move on to the RGBs. And I'm also going to try out a different tip for the RGBs. Different tip for my soldering iron. I'll get to that in a minute. Alright, let's 
So got here over needs to be done. Okay. All right, I think they look good. They're all facing the right direction. They're all soldered on both sides. Good enough for me. All right. So I'm going to shut the iron off because I'm going to switch tips, but I have some new soldering iron tips. Uh, I don't know if these are official Weller brand tips, but uh, they are supposed to fit on here. So good enough for me. Um, I want to try out this little hook tip. And the reason I want to do that is because with the conical tip, what ends up happening, let's see if I can do this. Okay. Yeah. What ends up happening is you get solder on the side of the tip right here, not on the point. But sometimes I need it like on the point. So with this hook tip here, it at least gets the tip, the side of it flatter to the board without having to angle the iron so far down. And since the iron is much is hotter more than just at the surface or at the tip, it's also hot here and all along this the whole thing. Uh, sometimes I'll hit another component or something like that. It's hard to get it low enough. So I'm going to try this to see if I can squeeze it in there without having to angle the iron quite so much. It's an experiment. We'll see if it uh, works out. I also have several other tips. So I've got a... Um, I've got a kind of a flat tip, but pointier, which might work for that because of the... the the solder will sit on the very tip of it, hopefully. Uh, and then I have two larger size chisel tips. Um, but I think those are going to be too big for what I want to do. 
So we'll try it with these and see what happens. And is that cool enough to grab it yet? No. But it might be cool enough to grab it with a pip towel. And also, get some water in me. And also, before I dump these all over the floor, put them in my spare diodes tub. Oops, that's my flux bag. I actually want to get just a little more flux out. Where are the LEDs? There are the LEDs. So we've got on this board one, two, three, four, five, ten, eleven LEDs. We've got a lot of extras to work with, and I've got more if need be. So, what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to flux all the pads again and flux the bottom of these, and then just dab some solder on the side, see what happens. Um, we'll see. Uh, hopefully the contact time will be very quick, and so I won't have an opportunity to destroy the LED. Although these are much easier to solder, so much easier to solder than the 6812s. Uh, so I'm not super concerned about them, but uh, I'm going to try anything to make it easier to solder these. So we need just a couple out here for right now. So on the component, there's a little notch in the upper left corner. Or just in the corner that lines up with the little notch on the pcb here oh you can't see it uh lines up with the little notch on the pcb and there and there's the contacts are on the side and the bottom come on come on you got this you got this how about that okay well there's contacts are on the side and on the bottom so if i just line it up right dab some solder on there hopefully it'll stick in place well, what a lot of people do is they solder one of the pads they put a little solder on there they hold the component in place and then try to heat it up and try to get it to flow that's fine but it's a lot of extra work because you have to solder in advance you have to like solder the pads and then like really you should probably be using flux anyways on that and we're, we're just going to try it just go straight with the flux Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah. So load up my brush with some flux. We're going to go back to using this one because, or the, the pointier ones, because I want these to sit flat against the board. So I want them to rotate a little more freely. 
And also a thing that I need to notice for myself is that these are not all the same orientation of the RGBs. I have screwed it up where I've put them in the wrong orientation before because I'm like, oh, they're all the same. Nope. So I got to make sure that I don't put them in the wrong way. And they're numbered. I'm assuming they're numbered in order. So I'm going to try to do them in the right order. Okay. So we've got one here. So I'm going to... Little flux on the pads. Orient the components. Flux on the bottom. And on the sides. Put the LED on there, get it in place, and let me load this up. Yeah, see how it's kind of like... How the solder is not on the tip? I gotta be careful, because this is really hot. That's, I'm, that's what I'm hoping to try to get flatter against the board. And hopefully the angled tip helps with that. Nope. Not so much. I mean, it works, but... It's not what I was looking for. So I'm going to switch to a different tip in a second, but I'm going to get this one finished. No, I'm not. I'm going to switch to a different tip. Okay. This is also the first time I've experimented with different tips, because I've just been using the conical tip for years now. So... It's all an experiment. So what I need to do now, because I it's a little off center, the component. Damn, can't focus this thing at all. It's a little off center. Um, doesn't give me a whole lot of room to work with on the other side, so it's going to be tough to get it in there. But hopefully that will prove the uh, concept with this particular tip, is that it can get solder on the very tip of the tip, and then I can just go boop, boop, right up against it. And while that heats up, I'm going to get some more water.
Okay. So, gonna reflow the original ones that I did. Maybe even try to get the component moved a little bit. Oh yeah, much better. Okay, we're just going to write this one, that particular LED off for the moment. Where's my wick? What I want to do is try to get as much of the solder off of here as possible, just so that the component will actually sit flat on the board. Should only take half, just a quick little dab there. Okay, it's pretty smooth. Let's try it again. Fresh LED. Little flux on each side and on the bottom. Put it on the board, line it up, hold it in place. And then just a quick Dab. No. Nope. Okay, that's not really working either. It's too big. We'll see. One of the nice things about these spring headers is I don't have to solder anything to put them in. So I can flash this controller, stick it in here real quick, and then have the LEDs tested in moments. So that is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's not working at all. Let's try this. Nope, that's just loading up the tip. Okay. So that tip is not working for me either. Go back to our conical. Tried and true. Oh, come on. And before you scream at me, no, I'm not putting very much force on this. Just enough to turn it. Wait for that to get heated up. Ah, 
Okay. Actually, while I'm doing that, I'm going to see if I can't flash the controller real quick. Okay, so firmware is compiling. I'm actually going to move this out of the way because this is heated up now. Just flux this a little bit more. Are you just seeing my ear? Okay. There, that's much better. Firmware is downloaded. Let's see. And then Okay, it's flashed. So let's take our spring headers here, and these come in lengths of 20. These come in lengths of 20. Damn it. Okay. So uh, there are 12 pins on the Pro Micro, so I need to trim this down. One, two, three, four, eight. Okay, let's just measure twice, cut once. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Okay, so then the idea is that you push the header in, oh wait, this is the bottom, controller goes on top, not that it matters really, because you can just flip it over, so you push the header in to the board, and it stays in place, and it's making electrical contact which is the most important thing. 
put that one in there. It's in place, making electrical contact. Then, so we want raw ground reset to be on the left here. Whoops, my hand's in the way. So we want raw ground reset to be on the left here. Raw ground reset is on this side, so upside down. Push it in there. And there you go. That is a hot swap installation of a Pro Micro with the spring headers, which is so cool. I can't even begin to. But like I said, they're kind of expensive, these headers. All right, so let's plug it into power. Okay, so it's lit up. So we have a, okay, sorry, I'm, okay, so we have a, a functioning LED, which is good. That's better than no functioning LEDs. Now we can move on to the next bits, but since this is a Pro Micro and these USB ports are fiddly, and whatnot, I am going to put my magnetic connector into here. And I need to find a cable for it. Well, they might be all upstairs. Fortunately, there's my horn over here that I'm actually using with this computer right now it has the same cable. So I can so I snap it on there. Great. So now I'm going to do the mouse of the LEDs. And I'll probably do like two or three at a time and then test them and do the next ones and Keep moving. Okay. Sam, I have no idea what you're talking about. but I will chalk it up to the fact that you have brain cancer. And for people who are horrified by that, uh, Sam has brain cancer. It's pretty bad. And he uses, he, he lets everyone know all the time that he has brain cancer. So. Like, literally has brain cancer. Not even kidding. What's up, Daryl? Is this the Daryl of Cornish Zen fame? Oh yeah, it must be, because Daryl D.H. Dov. Alright. Welcome to my humble shop. Where you get to watch me flail with soldering RGBs. God damn it.
Okay, since that one went poorly, I'm going to test it individually. Where'd my cable go? Okay, that one works too. Good. Yeah, this technique is not uh, perfect. It's just really hard to get in there with the ball of solder. LEDs. You bastards. Okay. All right. I'm I'm just going to fall back entirely to more traditional methods here. I cannot get this solder to stick to this freaking pad at all. Come on, flux. Okay. Well, that took the controller off, but not the headers. That's good enough, I guess.
going to turn the iron up just a little bit. Just to see if a little bit more heat will help. This is such a fine tip that it's hard to transfer heat. Come on, there, okay. Sorry, this lighting is probably not great on camera, but it's like, it's helping me see the board, which is also important. Sort of. Okay, that's five of them. So I'm going to put the controllers back in, or the controller back in. But this, side, I'm, this time I'm going to do it on this side. So I don't have to flip it over and all that fun stuff. So it should just be face up on this side. And then plug in. And... <laughs> Although, it's entirely possible that the default firmware just has different colors or something. So, I don't know. Because these three were definitely working before. I'm just going to keep going. I'll fix them later. If need be.
Oh, come on. I cannot get the solder to flow under this component for the life of me. Okay. Heat it up. Solder. What the hell? We'll see if that works. I don't think it's a very good joint, though. Okay, that one's doing the same thing. It's just balling up on the tip of the iron. It's not... It's not flowing onto the pads at all. Dude, now it's balling up on the fucking PCB. It's not even balling up on the pads. What sort of garbage is this? Oh my god, I can't... Okay, let me try one thing. Whoops. Alright, so I just hit it with some isopropyl alcohol to try to clean things off a little bit. And now we're going to try again. Hopefully not light the whole place on fire.
<laughs> Why? Why with these two LEDs? Why is it doing this? The other ones were working fine. It's not lack of heat. Okay. Whatever. Well, I mean, let me just try to clean it off. Let's see. The problem is it's so, okay. The tip looks fine. I think anyways. Okay. Come on. That's yeah, hard to see. It looks fine. And the other pads are working fine. It's just the ground pad on these two LEDs that was like a pain in the ass. It just wouldn't ball up. It wouldn't touch the pads. <sighs> okay, well. Um, I'm going to try something here. Here. Oh, I can't. Can't. Why is it saying there are no devices available? Hid console connected. Well, that's... <laughs> okay, I'm going to try a different firmware. One that won't work as a keyboard, but it should work as a um, 
LED test. Helix. Okay, so I just flashed the Helix LED firmware test firmware, which, assuming it's the same pin that the LEDs are on, which should be, um, this will just work. It'll flash red, green, blue, red, green, blue, green. And of course, you can see it is doing that. And by it is, I mean it's not doing that. And I don't know why these were all working. Great. Okay, I'm just going to continue soldering all of these and then I'll go back and fix things. Because I'm getting frustrated. LEDs are a pain in my ass. Why do I bother? <laughs> ah, okay. Where are my LEDs? There they are. Hello, Richard. I mean, maybe it is caked in old solder. Because it's 
I mean, looking at this pad, it's just not... <sighs> okay, I'm going to mess around with this a little bit. Let me use some tip cleaner. See if that helps. If you ever use this stuff, make absolutely sure you do not inhale the fumes. Because, oh my god, is there... All right, well, that seemed to go a little bit better. I wonder if it is... I'm just doing too good a job at hitting it with this brass, and it's taking all the tanning off. I don't know. We'll find out in a minute. Okay, so make sure I get the correct orientation.
Oh, wait, what? I don't fucking flip over. Okay. Getting frustrated. It's okay. Okay, I already hate these spring headers. They just don't grip very well. So guess what? <laughs> We're going to not use them on this build. Use regular ass uh, square pin headers. Okay, let's get a little better lighting for y'all. Because square, square headers are real easy to solder. I don't need so much light.
Alright. So raw is okay. I know one of these days I'm gonna put this thing on upside down. I'm gonna be very un, un very I was gonna say unsad, very sad about it. Uh so I always double check before I put it on. That actually happened a couple times recently on the split KB server. People were like, Hey, so my keyboard isn't working, whatever, and it's like your controller's upside down, dude. Uh, you should unplug that immediately before you burn something out. But also, uh, that's fun. Sorry that you're going to have to desolder that whole thing. And actually, I'm curious about something. So when it worked the first time, that was plugged in to straight into a micro USB cable into a hub on my desk that's plugged into the hub in the monitor that's plugged into the computer. But this magnetic one is just plugged directly into the computer. I don't know. I'm, I'm just on a punch. <laughs> okay. Nope. It's just fucked up. Okay. Let's reflow some stuff and add a little more solder in a couple of places. And you know what? I'm going to, I think there is some heat problem here, probably because it's colder outside again today. It's 52. I've got the door open. I've got a fan blowing. 
It's just colder. Oh. So since I kind of ruled out that it was the cable or the port or something else weird, I'm going to put the magnetic one back in just because it's easier to flop back and forth. Okay. Okay, so I didn't make it worse. So that's good. It should be red, green, blue, red, green, blue. Red, green. You know, on a hunch here, I'm going to see if... Okay. I'm going to change the tip. Does this one look good? No. I mean, I've got like a whole pile of these things. And not even these. I mean, I've got like tons of just the conical tips. I wonder if I need a new wand. Maybe something's going on there? I don't know. We'll see. This one is brand new. Can't see it, whatever. Ah. 
<clears throat> I don't know why I've had so much trouble with LEDs lately. I mean, they're a pain in the ass, but like... These are being especially a pain in the ass for some reason. And that's just boggles my mind because yeah all right Whoop. let's get some solder on there There. Okay. Three of them work. So, Daryl, I think you're right. It is a heat problem. Because uh, if I hold it on there a little longer, it'll eventually flow. But that scares me a little bit because that means it's pumping a whole bunch of heat into the component. But it's clearly not. So, who knows? Okay, we're making progress. Working our way around the board. And actually, I'm getting annoyed at these. Safety glasses.
Okay, that's better. Where were we? I think we we're here. Whoops. Jesus. Okay, yep. There's next. There's next. Don't need these anymore. That one should be good. Good. Yep. All right, I'm fairly confident the rest of these will work. These will, except for that one, for some reason. Hooray, they all work now. Finally, finally. Okay. So now I'm going to reflash these with the. Or reflash this with the default Revyung firmware. If I can remember what pins are the reset pins. Fortunately, I have a bunch of these. Okay, so it's the second and third one on that side. Okay. They are all red. Great. Beautiful. Socket time. <sighs> okay, I, I feel pretty good now. Like, I, I was very frustrated and honestly pretty pissed off, but now I'm feeling a lot better. Ooh. So I want to put the reset on the bottom or the top? It's traditionally on top, but the outline is on the bottom. 
so it could go either way. I'm gonna wait. Okay.
Oops. And let's make sure this didn't break all the LEDs. Okay, all the LEDs still work. Good. So, um, other than the reset switch, that is all the soldering. And I think I'm going to put the reset switch on the bottom. Just to keep it nice and clean. Why not? Where did it go? 
It's around here somewhere. I know it. <laughs> there it is. All right. So. Actually, I'm going to do this like the LEDs. I'm going to tune the pad. Stick the component on there. Flow it, maybe. Okay, one last LED check, they all work, okay good, that is the last of the soldering. Now it's just case assembly, and plugging in all the switches and all that good stuff. And clean up. But I usually do clean up off stream. Okay, so there's switches. Oh, wait, that's not the last of the soldering. Because I've got two stabilizers. Nope, those aren't soldered. Okay. I've never used these before, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Shit, okay. Let's look up on the internet.
Oh, I see. It's keyed, so I can't put this in back order or it doesn't work. That's good to know. And this snaps in somehow. Okay, and it looks like this, the bar goes that way. So, My watch is telling me to stand. I've been standing since noon. goes on there. Oh, I see. This goes through there. Somehow. Oh no, no, I see. I think, maybe, maybe not. And I think I see how I can do this without having to do it all in one shot. Okay, so, shit. Okay, so, this goes in, and it can only go in one way, so I don't have to worry about that. Then drop this in, and then this snaps into the board. Maybe. Oh my god, come on. Okay. And here I thought the frustration was going to be over. with once the LEDs were done, but no, no such luck. Okay, so I do need Thank you. 
Sorry, I'm trying to get this so I can see better what I'm doing. But also I have a whole bunch of windows open and I keep switching around and yeah, anyways. Okay. There we go. These are Phillips head screws. So I need my Phillips bits. Okay, so stabilizer's in there. Now we're going to put together the rest of the case. So that is for the cover. And all of these screws and stuff are for this. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
These screws do not want to come out of this bag. Come on. There. Nope. One more. There. Pain in the ass. All right. <clears throat> and then we need the standoffs. These are also Phillips. If only I was right-handed. <laughs>
Okay. So before I put the plate on here, I need to put this cover on because that goes on top of there. Now I kind of wish I had put an Elite C on here because it's black and not this blue thing, but that's fine. <clears throat> Actually, I'll leave that one on for now. So what happens here is so this goes through. There's a little nut on the bottom. I think I have a driver for these. Nice. Okay.
so many extra screws and stuff. Like, seriously, there's six extra spacers and eight extra screws. It, I always get a little worried that I screwed something up when that happens, but nope, pretty sure there's just a bunch of extras in the bag. Okay, so that is that part. Oops. Time for switches. Oh, that's the stabilizer. Okay. Sorry, I got distracted a little bit. Just a second. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I've got screwdriver stuff all over the place.
Okay, so those are the switches. Let's get some caps in here. Okay, now for the really fun part, trying to find appropriate caps for the rest of this. And, nope, that doesn't have stabilizers. Neither does that. None of these have stabilizer attachments. So really, I don't even need these. the stabilizer. Oh well. Okay. So I want space here.
there. Why not? <laughs> Just rando caps anyway, because it doesn't matter what they are. <clears throat> oh, come on. Come on. There we go. No. I was afraid of that. Oops. Okay, well, that middle one there is just going to be loose because there's no way to get to it from on top here. All right, so let's check this thing out. For real. See, I love this aesthetic where it has that little red glow. That's one of the things that I like about this board. Among other things, but... That is a pretty cool, let's see, this is a, okay, so we have a couple of keys that aren't working. All right, I don't know why. But I'll mess around with it. I might, uh, pull a switch. Actually, how oh, you jerk. Come on.
totally weird. There's a whole bunch of keys that aren't working. Anyways, that's all for today. I'm tired. <laughs> I will uh, work on this and get it fixed up. Uh, but it is... At least all the LEDs work. You can't see them from the bottom, which is a little frustrating. But hopefully with lights off and whatnot, the... Underglow will stick out a little bit from the side, maybe? Not so much. But, you know, it's not nothing. But this is a cool board. Uh, I'm going to try to daily drive this for the next week. Uh, but I need to figure out my key map, too, because... Um, my normal key map that I use is a 3x6 plus 3. And this is a 3x6 plus 3, but also plus 2. So it's like I got to figure out how to kind of merge the thumb rows a little bit together. Um, but sounds pretty nice. Those very lovely holy pandas. And yeah, but anyways, that's all for today. Uh, I'm going to call it good. Go get some food and relax for a little bit and probably come back down and take this apart and <laughs> see what else is wrong with it. I don't even know. But I'm I'm done messing with it for the day or for, for the moment. So uh, thank you all for stopping by and watching me flail at this keyboard. I bet what it is, is I just missed like an entire column or, or a bunch of like the sockets, the hot swap sockets, because I did the one side and then I turned it around and did the other side. I bet I just missed a bunch of those. So it's not there. Or maybe I, nope, I didn't push them off of the board, but we'll see. Um, we'll see. I'll get it figured out, and, uh, then I'll probably write something up later about the, the build, because this was fun, uh, other than the frustrating LEDs, but those are always frustrating. Um, I like the board, I like how it looks, I like how it feels, it's a little heavy for, in my backpack, I think, but, um, <clears throat> with a caseless chalk build, I think that'll be a lot better, weight-wise, um, and when I do that one, I'm going to put a nice nano and battery and all that good stuff. So hopefully that'll be coming in the next couple of weeks and I'll get that put together. But anyways, thank you all and uh, have a great weekend. <laughs>